and welcome back to Googie's Kitchen and if you are new here then hello and welcome. My name is Alexis and today I want to show you how to make my delicious vegan lentil cottage pie. As I just mentioned today I'm going to be making my delicious vegan lentil cottage pie. Now this recipe is really easy to do. It is slightly time consuming but it's not difficult to make at all um, and I'm making it for our dinner this evening so I thought while I was making it that I'd share the recipe with you. So here is how to make my vegan lentil cottage pie. So I've got my pan and I'm going to put this onto a high heat on my hob and I'm going to add a bit of oil to the base of the pan, probably about a teaspoon or two I'd say. And then I'm just going to spread the oil around the base of the pan with my plastic brush very gently. Try not to mop up too much of the oil, but I don't want too much in there as well at the same time. So, yep, that's fine. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this to heat. So my pan has started to sizzle away nicely now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some onions to the base of this pan. And I'm going to fry these until they start to soften. Um, so I'm just going to put all of those in there. And I'm just going to fry this now, as I said, until it starts to soften. The onion has started to soften and I'm also going to add a bit of garlic to this as well. Now I know garlic isn't a traditional thing to add to a shepherd's or cotton pie, but I just find it gives a little bit of extra flavour. That's why I like to add it. And that garlic is also a really good herb to have in your meals as well. It's really good for the heart and the digestion. So I do like to add garlic whenever I can. So I'm going to continue to fry these now until everything sort of softens and becomes and the onions become as translucent and clear. I think it is actually starting to happen now. I think it's all becoming clear, which is lovely. And I always add the onions in after, I, 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 the garlic, sorry, in after so it doesn't burn. Um, because when you add it in with the onions at first, I've noticed that it starts to burn, so I've started to add it in after I've added the onions in. And now what I'm going to do is I have some, I have one red pepper that I have chopped and removed the core and the seeds and then I sliced and diced. And I have a courgette which I've peeled and chopped into sort of one centimetre pieces. And then I also have some butternut squash that I also chopped into one centimetre pieces. And I'm just going to add all of these to the pan. I also turned the heat down slightly just then as well, because I felt like it was getting a bit hot. And I'm just going to fry everything in here now until this becomes soft as well. So everything has started to soften in the pan now. The butternut squash does remain very hard, so don't worry too much if that's not sort of softening, but the peppers and the courgette will start to soften. Um, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in my red lentils. Now you can use any type of lentils you like, red ones, green ones, any ones you want. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my tomato straight in as well. I'm not going to fry the lentils for too long, they don't really need frying off. And then I'm also going to add two tins of tomatoes as well to that. And then I have about 500 ml of beef stock as well. And I just like to pour the beef stock into the tin can so that I get the juice off the bottom as well. So there's no juice left in that now. Um, and I'll do the same to the other pan as well. And swirl that around because there isn't as much in that one. And then I'm going to mix everything together. And while that is coming to the boil, I'm going to get a tablespoon. And I'm going to put in about two tablespoons of tomato puree to that. One, two, 
Lovely. And then I have two tablespoons of tamari as well, which is soya sauce. But tamari is gluten free, but it's soya sauce that's been fermented for longer. So this is actually better for your body. So if you're looking for something better than soya sauce, because soya sauce is also very sugary as well. This is a great alternative and you find this in the Chinese section or in the gluten free section in most supermarkets as well. So I'm going to add two tablespoons of that in as well. And then I'm just going to add in finally some mixed herbs to this as well. So I've just got a teaspoon of mixed herbs to add. And then I'm going to bring this to the boil and I'm going to leave it to simmer for about 30 to 40 minutes. And while that's cooking, I'm going to cook the potato, but I'll show you that in a moment. So as I said, I'm going to leave this now for about 30 to 40 minutes and I'll try it when I come back. Make sure the lentils are soft and all the veggies soft as well. So I've put a large pan of water onto a high heat on the hob and I've just brought it to the boil and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in about a kilo of potatoes. This recipe does serve four so that's why I'm using a kilo. If you wanted to halve the ingredients then you could. Um, but yeah I'm just going to add all of these to the... So I've peeled and chopped the potatoes. Um, I chop them into probably about one inch pieces and I'm just going to add them to the boiling water and then I'm also going to add some salt to that as well. Oh and I also added some salt and pepper to the um, base of the pie as well. So yeah so I've just added some salt to that and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring that to the boil again and then I'm going to leave them to simmer um, for about 10 to 15 minutes so until they're fork full so you put a fork in and it falls off immediately that means they're cooked so the base of the pie has been simmering away for about half an hour now the butternut squash is still slightly hard but that will soften later when I turn the oven on to preheat it but I've turned the heat off now because I think these lentils are actually cooked so I'm just going to try them mmm that's really good and as I said I added salt and pepper to that so I've turned the heat off and I'm just going to leave those there while I wait for the bo uh, potatoes to boil and while the potatoes are boiling I'm going to preheat my oven to 200 degrees so the potatoes have been cooking for about 15 minutes now and I'm just going to try and get a fork in one of them I don't seem to be able to so that's perfect that means these are cooked so I'm going to remove these from the heat and drain them and then I'll show you how I'm going to mash them later. So as you can see I've drained my potatoes and now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mash them up. They're lovely and soft so I don't think I'm going to use any milk in this but I am going to use a little bit of vegan butter and I bought this butter in my local supermarket. If you haven't got vegan butter and you want to use margarine that's absolutely fine. Or if you want to use oil as well then you can so I'm just going to mash all of these together like so and then I'm going to add a couple of tablespoons of nutritional yeast and nutritional yeast isn't actually a yeast it's a plant and it tastes very cheesy so it makes things foods taste really cheesy so I'm using this instead of cheese um, and we all love it and nobody really knows the difference when they eat it in this house they think it's cheese and I know it's nutritional yeast so bonus for me really <laughs> I can't actually have dairy so I have to find alternatives and that's a great one and I bought that on Amazon I've never actually seen it in a supermarket but you might be able to buy it in a health food store. Um, in the UK we have a big health food store called Holland and Barrett and you may be able to get it in there but I've never seen it. I always buy it on Amazon so yeah and I will link that in the description box below for you as well so yes. 
just going to keep mashing now until everything is really lovely and smooth and it is and now I'm going to get my baking tray out of the oven so I won't be a moment I've just gone and got my baking tray from the oven and my baking tray is a pampered chef stone um, stoneware is great because it absorbs all the badness from the food but leaves the goodness unfortunately pampered chef no longer exists in the UK but I think you can buy similar things like this online so if you want to then go check that out. I'll try and link one in the description box below for you along with the nutritional yeast as well. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour my the base of my pie into the uh, baking tray. And as you can hear the baking tray is very hot so the base is all sizzling away nicely. Um, and I'm just going to put all of that in there like so I like to get all the bottom stuff as well because it has all the really tasty bits down the bottom from the bottom of the pan right so that's that and now I'm just going to get a spoon for my mashed potato and I just literally put my mashed potato on the top and hopefully Yeah, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to spread the mashed potato across the top of this pie now. Don't matter if it's, it doesn't matter if it sinks in, that's fine. If it's a bit messy and a bit rustic looking, I'm not going to tell anybody. Um, I am using my finger as well, but I have washed my hands, I promise you. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to continue to put this mashed potato on the top now. So my mashed potato has been spread evenly across the top, well as evenly as I could spread it. And now I'm going to put this into the oven for about 25 to 30 minutes or until the mashed potato goes golden brown. So the mashed potato is a lovely golden brown colour now, so I'm going to serve this with some broccoli this evening. But for now, that is our dinner done. So that's how you make my delicious vegan lentil cottage pie. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to be serving this with some broccoli and I think I might serve it with some cauliflower as well. I'm really looking forward to my dinner. It smells delicious. And the recipe for this, I will link in the description box below for you. But for now, that's it from me. Thank you so much for watching. Please feel free to give me a big thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and please feel free to leave any comments below and please don't forget to hit that subscribe button see you all soon